Let me just go ahead and say this right off the rip. Living in the United States of America is expensive. We have the most expensive houses. We have the most expensive apartments. We have the most expensive health care. Living in the United States of America is expensive. One of the things that I have seen is a lot of people are looking for a sale in America. They're looking for a massive crisis because I was wondering, negative content really does well on, on YouTube and TikTok and other online entities. And I was like, why is all this negative content doing so well when someone comes out with something positive, it doesn't do that well. And I began to understand the mindset of the people in America. Be sure to watch this video from beginning to the end because there's gonna be some really good stuff for you towards the end. And it got me because right now there's a guy who's doing car content and is talking about the increasing prices of cars, how an F-150 is now, it's like, I think it's $75,000 for that pickup truck, up to $100,000 with the appropriate number of options. And people are watching it and I read the comments and they're just like, that truck was never worth 75,000. And you're seeing I'll call it a battle of the classes. You have a lot of people who like living in America, who enjoy living in America, enjoy the American theme, enjoy the American lifestyle, but they want America to go on sale. They want real estate to go on sale. They want car prices to go on sale. Actually, that's not even true. They want real estate to crash. They want car prices to crash. They want everything to crash. I was watching a video that was talking about how the price of eggs has gone up, the price of eggs. And I was just sitting here, we've become very cost conscious. And once again, as I said in the beginning of the video, living in America is expensive. I was watching this couple who moved to Ecuador and it has their name like JP and Amelia, something like that. And they were just talking about all of the benefits of living in Ecuador, having a house in Ecuador, the things that they're able to enjoy living in Ecuador because Ecuador is 75% less, up to 90% less than living here in the United States of America. And once again, if you want to move to another country, you want to enjoy your life, you want to spread your wings, I have no problem with that. I have no problem with that at all because, you know, that can be fun. Many years ago, I lived in Japan for six months. That was an awesome experience. What I'm saying is, you know, would I want to live in Ecuador? Or would I want to live in Portugal? Or would I want to live in Thailand? And I've been to Thailand. I've never been to Ecuador. I've been to Europe. I've never been to Portugal. And part of me is like, no, I don't want to live in those places because I don't know those places. And that's a big, big part, you know, and also living abroad could be a fascinating experience. It could be a popular experience, but let's go ahead and talk about the big sale that America, America has a lot of great things that are expensive. I'm not going to say, Oh, it's cheap to live here. You can get, no, it's, it's expensive living in America. And you know, I, once again, I'm not mentioning any names cause I don't want any beefs. I don't want anyone going around messing with anyone. However, I see what I think is a dangerous path. There are many people who advocate living less and they're talking about buying a trailer. They're talking about moving out. They're talking about getting some acres, throwing the house on it. And the, the big thing is America became the country that it has become because a lot of people were willing to do the work. Now we have a bunch of people who don't want to do the work. And if that's your prerogative, if that's how you want to get down, that's your business. I don't really care. Here's the thing. Without the work of the people who sailed here from England, got on these lands and these folks went all across the country and covered wagons with horses to build out this country without these hardy, industrious, industrious, brave people, this country would not be where it is today. And I, I see a lot of stuff. Yes, rent's going up. Yes, the price of houses is going up. And let's talk about houses. There's a ton of information on the internet about the real estate market crash. And you've got a number a number of YouTubers who are making these uh, real estate marketers crashing videos. And here's the thing. If you're in some place that people don't want to live, yeah, the real estate market's 
pretty much level. And in many of those areas, the real estate prices never got to these high prices. But lack of place in Florida, people from California are moving to Florida. People from New York are moving to Florida. They're just literally shoveling in there. And I'm gonna say this, real estate prices are never going to crash to the level that a lot of people want them to. Because right now, real estate is tight. If you have a house and you got a 3% mortgage and you're happy and you, you don't have to move, a lot of those folks are like, I'm gonna sit here. I'm gonna sit here and ride this out because for me to sell my house and for me to move, I will have to be introduced to a six or maybe seven or 8% mortgage rate. Because this is the thing. They say the national mortgage rate is like 6%, 6.5%. That's for the people with the best credit. That's for the people rocking, I would say 750 or more. 750, that's the best rate. And the average credit score in America is 716. So that means a bunch of people are not going to get that best rate. So a lot of people would literally have to come out of their house, they got at 3% and roll into a 7% mortgage. That's just, that just doesn't make sense. So that's one of the reasons that inventory is tight. There is no housing crash in Atlanta. There is no housing crash in Texas. There's no housing crash in Florida, the whole state of Florida. There's no housing crash in the state of New York. There's no housing crash in California. There's no housing crash because these are places that people want to live. But this is the thing that gets me. You have a lot of smart, hardworking people who really want to see a real estate crash. So they think that they can get a deal. Now here's the thing, and this is what I call the American mindset. Let's say you're on the street and you go and buy this business that's shutting down. It's like, we're closing down, we're having a fire sale. And you pull over in the parking lot and you go in there because you feel you can get a deal. Here's the thing, when that business is going out of business, the owner's hurting, the owner may have filed bankruptcy, the owner, there's a lot of bad things that happen when a business closed down, most of the time. Sometimes the owner's just like, I'm done, there's no one to take over the business. I'm gonna just shut it down. And there's no real dangerous reason why they're shutting it down. But typically, as the average American, once again, the average American doesn't care that if people get hurt to bring the prices down to a level where they feel it's more comfortable. One of the things that I was looking at was uh, condos. And the condo market is really, really interesting. I've noticed that people bought condos years ago and the ability to sell an older condo for way more is in existence because the newer condos go for more than the older condos. In the condo market, it doesn't really adjust and move like a house. Similar thing with townhouses. I was looking at a townhouse, it was 450 and due to these rapid um, appreciations, now it's like, it was 450, now it's 550. So it appreciated 100,000 in the last two and a half years. And that was a big jump. But first, condos typically don't appreciate like that. Then second, townhouses typically don't appreciate like that. The main thing that appreciates is a standalone house. These are the things that just go up like crazy. So it's making me reevaluate my thought process on um, what I'm probably gonna end up in. I'm probably gonna end up in another house. And I'm kinda, kinda nervous because from what I am seeing, housing prices are going back up. They're not going down. And one of the things is, I think most of America is priced out of optimum American lifestyle because they don't have enough money. And once again, America's expensive. It takes money to live here. 2019, I had a heart attack. And because of where I lived, I lived 10 minutes from one of the better hospitals. There's Northside Hospital, there's St. Joe's Hospital, and there's Scottish Rite Hospital. They're like, Northside's here, Scottish Rite's here, St. Joe's here. And in that triage, I got access to the best medical care on the planet. My medical bills showed it, because it this whole, that whole thing was close to half a million dollars for me being in the hospital. And I got the best treatment, and as a regard, I'm still alive, you know? So I have a feeling that if I was on the south side, I don't think I would be alive because essentially the heart attack I had was typically one that kills people. And because I had access to the best medical treatment, to the best doctors, because I lived in that neighborhood, 
that made the whole difference in me being alive and not alive. Alan Roger Curry, I believe he had a heart attack. He's gone. Kevin Samuels had a heart attack. He's gone. And I, I could know what can happen. Well, I don't think Kevin got to the hospital in time. That was probably one of the big things for him. And I don't know what happened to Alan Roger Curry because, you know, I, I assume he had a heart attack. Having access to the best housing, the best medical care, the best treatments, it's going to take money. And there are many people who feel, who feel that they should have access to the best of all this other stuff without having access to the money. And this is one of the things, because I grew up really, really poor. And I understand what it's like to be poor, understand what it's like not to have the things you want, understand what it is to desire, to want, to have, because you can't, because you don't have the money. I know what that feels like. Right now, we're in a crazy economy. We may not have a recession this year. We may not have a recession. I know that's pretty bold for me to state and to clarify in this video, but we may not have a recession this year. And we may have a recession in 2024. Once again, the numbers aren't out, but we have a lot of recessionary pressure. We have a lot of people being laid off in tech. Trucking is down. And this is one of the reasons that so many owner operators had to literally leave the trucking business. And once again, you, you have a lot of people who are hoping for a sale. But here's the thing, and I'm going to say this as carefully as I can. For the sale to occur that so many people want, a lot of people will be hurt. Like when I shut down the upscale garage sale, we we, we didn't we weren't we weren't hurting. It's just my partner that developed um colon cancer i got sick and there was not no one we didn't set the business up to run without us that was our fault but no one got hurt hurt meaning that we had to go out of business we chose to go out of business because of circumstances for these crashes to happen i want you to think if ford is charging seventy five thousand dollars for a f-150 and the price dropped from seventy five thousand to fifty thousand in the course of a year which is pretty quick to knock $25,000 off the cost of a brand new vehicle. You know how many bad things would have to be happening? How many people would be laid off? It would be really, really, really bad. It would be really, really, really bad for these things to happen. And I don't think that people actually think, I think that people's like, this is where I'm at. I'm here, I have a full-time job, I have decent credit, but I don't have enough money to get into a house. And I think they're thinking about where they are and they want prices to come down and they want the market to change. And there's little real thought to the devastation and the catastrophe that would happen if housing prices suddenly dropped, car prices suddenly dropped, inflation just disappeared. Now inflation disappearing, that would be a good thing because that means that the price of things that we have would not be shooting up like crazy. So that would be a good thing, but you know, this whole seeking a sale in America, when you have the option, if you want to employ yourself, number one, get the most education that you can get. That's a given. You want to get the most education that you can get. That is hands down one of the first things you need to do. Number two, you want to start a business or get and also get the most education you can get, whether it's formal education or it's informal education. You want to get as much education as you possibly can get your hands on and you want to choose to elevate your life because it's a choice. Like once again, there are many people who are leaving the United States of America to live in another country. And that could be really cool. That could be really cool living in Japan, living in Thailand. That's something that I have done part time early in my life. And I want to say something. The older you get, the harder that these things become. You're 65 years old and you're going to move to Mexico and you're going to move to Ecuador. You're going to move to Portugal. That is a huge, huge change. And that's why you have people who are homeless in Los Angeles versus moving out of Los Angeles and finding a place to stay. Because the, the change of leaving Los Angeles is going to be so huge. It's going to be rather, rather large. It's going to be quite significant for these people to leave Los Angeles and to roll off into some other place. So this is one of the things that you are having happen in the world, in the country. And as an individual, if you don't choose to upgrade yourself, 
and upgrade your lifestyle, you're going to be left with whatever is on the table. And one of the things that you're going to see is we're going to have a very interesting future with artificial intelligence. Yes, artificial intelligence is going to kill a bunch of jobs. It is. But artificial intelligence is going to create a super level of high income jobs that will literally blow your mind. But once again, it's about positioning. Are you positioning yourself to be in the lane to get one of these high income jobs? Are you positioning yourself where you can live in America the way that you want to live, on the terms you want to live, living in the house you want to live, driving the car that you want to live, eating the food that you want to live? Have you positioned yourself? Or are you just merely sitting by working the lowest weight, working the job? That might be dismissive. I'm not going to say that. Working the job and then hoping that everything, the price, everything crashes. Because what I see is I see a real estate market correction, but I don't see a crash. Just there will not be a crash. And these housing prices are just going to keep getting higher and higher. And a lot of people are going to pay that money. It's just facts. So let me know your thoughts and opinions. Now, this is one of the things. Remember what I said? You can choose to upgrade your lifestyle. You can choose to upgrade what you're doing. And this is where this month is very, very important to you. I have a new course called The Power of Productivity, how to lead that bold life that you want that gives you the process, the sequence, and the stand-up of the things that you need to do to go ahead and to establish yourself from a very prominent place because this course teaches you how to think, teaches you how to strategize, teaches you how to get things done. It gives you a system, a process of how to do things which can make you way more efficient, which can make you much more aggressive and can open up the door for you to do a lot of different things that will make you money so you can elevate yourself. Because once again, I feel as a single man, you should be aiming to make 120,000 gross revenue. I don't know why I get these questions. Is that gross or net revenue? Like, what does it mean? Like $120,000 gross revenue, you're probably gonna pay $30,000 in taxes and have $90,000 left to spend. So $120,000 as a single person. And then to get to even more money as a married couple, you make 120, she makes 120, that puts you at almost 250. So you, you have a choice. You have a choice. You can choose to be aggressive. You can choose to level up your life. You can choose to actually do something to make your life more productive. That's on you. Or you can just continue to do what you're doing and just exist in, my opinion, the greatest country in the world when you don't have to. So this course is going to teach you how to do things. It's going to teach you how to work. It's going to teach you how to plan. It's going to teach you so many things that you clearly don't know or don't even understand at the moment. So that course is going to be in the first comment. It's in the description, but it's going to be in the first comment and the money course, which is free. It's also going to be in the comment section. So just go ahead and grab those and take advantage of this early student discounting because I'm not charging the full price of the course because the course isn't created. As I build it out, the price is lower and the price is going to go up really, really soon because I estimate that I should be finished with this course before next Sunday, the way it is looking. I should be finished with this course before next Sunday. So what you want to do is go ahead and get in this course this week as soon as possible and I will give you some stuff that you don't have that's going to help you become incredibly efficient, incredibly remarkable, and learn how to do things and teach you how to build that business that's going to liberate you from a regular, normal lifestyle. My name is Glendon Cameron. I will see you guys in the next video.